Next up is question three. It says, use the integral test to determine whether each series converges or diverges. And for part A, we're looking at the sum of n times e to the negative n squared, where n varies from one to infinity. And so to begin, we'll let f of x equal x times e to the negative x squared. And as I've mentioned a few times previously, in order to apply the integral test, this function f needs to, apply, needs to satisfy the following two conditions. Okay, f needs to be non-negative, in this case on the interval from one to infinity, because note that our sum starts at one. And f needs to be decreasing on this interval from one to infinity. Okay, now here f is non-negative. Note that this exponential term, well that's always positive, right, for any x. And this x in front, since we're on this interval from one to infinity, it is also positive. Okay, so this product is positive. So f is non-negative on this interval, and f is decreasing. Now this is uh, less obvious, but note that if you take the derivative of f and simplify, you get that f prime of x is the quantity 1 minus 2x squared times e to the negative x squared. And this derivative is negative on this interval from 1 to infinity. Okay, so f is both non-negative and decreasing, and so we can apply the integral test. So to do that, consider this improper integral, and we'll compute this thing using a substitution. Let's let u equal x squared, and so du is 2x dx. And notice for the bounds of integration, when x is 1, u is x squared, so then u would be 1 squared, which is equal to 1. And then as we let x approach infinity, u, which is equal to x squared, will also approach infinity. Okay, so we've adjusted these bounds, even though they happen to be the same bounds as what you see here for the x integral. Uh, for the exponential term, okay, that's going to become e to the negative u. And then for x dx, notice that shows up right here. x dx is du divided by 2. So that's where we get this term. Okay, so now integrating e to the negative u, that'll give us negative e to the negative u, and this one half just comes out front. And now we're gonna evaluate this expression at one and at infinity. Okay, now to evaluate at infinity, what we're really doing is taking the limit of this expression as we let u approach infinity, right? So when we do that, this exponential term approaches zero. And so simplifying this, we get the value one over 2e for this integral. Now, I don't actually care about the specific value of this integral. What I really care about is whether or not this integral converges or diverges. And since I'm getting this finite value for this integral, we conclude that the improper integral converges. And so by the integral test, this series of n times e to the negative n squared, it also converges. All right, great. So that will do it for part A. Let's check out B. It's fairly similar. We're looking at the sum of one over n times the natural log of n. And here, n goes from two to infinity. Okay, so just like in part A, we'll let f of x equal one over x times the natural log of x. And again, we need to check these two conditions to uh, in order to apply the integral test. So since x and the natural log of x are positive on the interval from two to infinity, notice this interval, right, uh, is two to infinity, and that's because we're starting the sum at two. And since both of these individual factors in this product are positive, okay, this entire expression for f of x is positive, and so this first condition that f be non-negative is satisfied, okay? f is also decreasing on this interval from two to infinity, and we don't have to take the derivative here. Uh, here is just enough to note that as x gets larger, both x and the natural log of x will get larger, and so one over this product will get smaller, okay? So f is decreasing on this interval, and so we can apply the integral test. All right, so computing this integral, again, we'll use a substitution. So I'll let u equal the natural log of x, so du is dx over x. And we adjust the bounds of integration, so when x is 2, u is the natural log of 2. 
and as we let x approach infinity, u, which is equal to the natural log of x, also approaches infinity. Okay, so those are the bounds. Now this natural log of x you see in the denominator here, that'll just become u. And then the dx over x, well that's just du. Okay, so that goes up there. And so now we can integrate. So the integral of 1 over u, that's the natural log of the absolute value of u. And here we are evaluating at the natural log of 2 and at infinity. Okay, so when I take the limit here, as u approaches infinity, this natural log will blow up, and what we're seeing there is that this improper integral is divergent. All right, so since this improper integral diverges, then the integral test implies that this series of 1 over n times the natural log of n also diverges. All right, very nice. Part C, it's essentially more of the same, but there is one little snag as we will see here. So we're looking at the sum of n over n squared plus 4. n goes from 1 to infinity. And so we'll let f of x be x, o x over x squared plus 4, which is certainly non-negative on the interval from 1 to infinity because both the numerator and the denominator are positive on this interval. However, f is not decreasing on this interval. Okay, now this is not totally obvious. So here's a graph of x over x squared plus 4. And you can see, right, at 1, we're here. We actually increase up to this point at 2, and then we start to decrease. OK, so is this a big problem? Actually, no, it's not a big deal at all. It's, uh, we can work around this quite easily. OK, so while it is true that f is not decreasing on the interval from 1 to infinity, it is true that f is decreasing on the interval from 2 to infinity. And we can see that by just taking the derivative of f, which when you simplify, you get 4 minus x squared all over the quantity x squared plus 4 squared. And this is negative on this interval from 2 to infinity. So we can apply the integral test to the series here starting at n equal 2. Okay, so we'll be able to determine the convergence or divergence of this series, which really is the same thing as the given series, except for the fact right, that we're missing the very first term when n is 1. But we can account for that very easily, as we'll see here in just a few moments. All right, so now let's go ahead and apply the integral test on the interval from 2 to infinity. So to integrate x over x squared plus 4. Again, I'll use this substitution. So we'll let u equal x squared plus 4. So du is 2x dx. Okay, so just the bounds of integration. So when x is 2, u is 2 squared plus 4. So 4 plus 4 is 8. And then as we let x approach infinity, u, which is x squared plus 4, that also approaches infinity. Now the x squared plus 4 in the denominator, that becomes u. And then the x dx, well, dividing by 2 here, that's du over 2. All right, so we're really integrating just 1 over u, which is the natural log of the absolute value of u, and this 1 half just comes out front. And now when we evaluate here, just like we saw in part b, right, this natural log is going to blow up to infinity, which implies that this improper integral diverges. So this tells us that the uh, since this improper integral from 2 to infinity diverges, the series where the sum starts at n equal 2, it also diverges. Okay, so then how do we account for the fact that we're missing this first term when n is 1? Well, our original series, <clears throat> which starts when n is 1, that's just what? 1 fifth plus this series right here where the sum starts at 2, and we just showed that this thing diverges. And so if I add 1 fifth to this divergent sum, Okay, I still get a divergent sum, and so we conclude that the original series diverges. Okay, now this same argument could be applied to really any function that has this kind of behavior, where, okay, sure, it's not decreasing on the entire interval in question, but the point is, is that it's eventually decreasing, okay? So somewhere down the line it turns around and then starts to decrease. That's really sufficient in order for us to conclude 
uh, convergence or divergence based off this improper integral. All right, well, in any event, I'm going to end this video with a warning because we've essentially captured all the, the main details of the integral test, but I really want to emphasize one more thing, and that is, again, be, be sure to check these conditions on the function f before you apply the integral test. Okay, so here is a good example of where you can get into some trouble. Okay, this is from an old exam that I gave. Okay, and it says, it can be shown that the integral from zero to infinity of the sine of x squared is equal to the square root of pi over eight. This isn't particularly easy to show, um, but it is true, okay? The question says, does the integral test allow us to conclude that the series where we're summing the sine of n squared converges. Explain. Okay, so it's tempting to just say, hey, look, the fact that this improper integral is equal to this finite value, right, the square root of pi over eight, says that this improper integral converges. And so this corresponding series must converge, right? Yeah, that's what the integral test says, right? Well, no, not quite, right? The problem here is that the function f of x, which is the sine of x squared, it doesn't satisfy these two conditions. In fact, if, it, if a function f fails to satisfy even one of them, okay, then we can't apply the integral test. You have to do something else. Okay, but in this case, it actually fails both, right? It's not non-negative and it's not decreasing on the interval from zero to infinity. Here is a graph, by the way, in red of the sine of x squared. We can see here, it's definitely not non-negative and it's definitely not a decreasing function on the interval from zero to infinity. All right, so, oh, go back there. The point here, and, and that's really all I was looking for, uh, for the answer to this question. You can just say, look, the integral test can't be applied, okay? Now, it does turn out that this series here, this uh, the sum of the sine of n squared, this thing actually does diverge. And the answer as to why, or sorry, the explanation as to why it diverges is simply for the fact that a sub n, which is the sine of n squared, does not approach zero as n approaches infinity. And so the test for divergence implies that this series diverges, okay? So here you have this improper integral that's actually convergent, but this associated series actually diverges, okay? And you might say, wait a minute, that violates the integral test. Well, that's kind of the whole point of this question. It's not violating the integral test, again, because f does not satisfy these conditions. So you gotta be really careful about that. All right, well, that's a good place to stop. In the next video, we'll introduce the, uh, the next convergence test, which is known as the ratio test, and I'll see you there. Thanks.